Hi, I'm Rich Bohannon. I'm a physical therapist with about 35 years of clinical experience and about 25 years here at the university as well. One of the courses I teach has to do with tests and measures. One of the topics we cover in that course is the measurement of range of motion. There are a number of different instruments that can be used for that purpose, but one of them is an inclinometer. In this case, it's going to be a MicroFET 3 that we're going to be going over, though Hogan Health Industries also makes two other inclinometers that can be used in a similar fashion. As I indicated, we're going to be going over procedures where we use an inclinometer today. And the particular inclinometer, as I indicated before, is the MicroFET 3. So as you see here, being an inclinometer, it has to work relative to gravity. So all the measurements will have to be taken with that in mind. But I can turn it on by pressing the reset button here, as you see. And then what I can do is I can hit the inclinometer. And at that point, it's ready to measure. I'm not sure if you can see it here now, but as you can see, if I, as I tilt it here, the numbers are changing because the position of the inclinometer relative to gravity is changing. And what would then happen is if I hit the red button here, it'll store that number and keep it. So what we'll be doing as we go through these procedures is we're going to be setting a specific angle, moving the inclinometer as the body moves, resetting the angle, and then hitting the button again, and that'll give us the change or the excursion in range of motion which has occurred. We're going to do that beginning with measurements at the neck. We'll then move on to measurements at the trunk. And finally, we'll take a few measurements which involve the extremities. Okay, we're going to begin by measuring neck rotation. We do this with the individual line supine, that is, on his back. In this case, I placed a slight a support under his head just so his forehead is a little bit flatter to accommodate the inclinometer. So what I'm going to do is start in this position here, rest it on his forehead, and what I'm going to do from that position now is I'm going to set it. Okay, sir, if you turn your head to the right as far as you can, that's it, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, let's say that's as far as it'll go. So what I'm going to do is reset the button again. And now I'm going to bring it up like this and reset it yet again. And what it shows me is that he had 60 degrees of neck rotation to the right. I can now repeat this, but have him go to the left. So we're going to start in a neutral position again. Here we go. Okay. And so what I'm, again, I'm going to just put it right here and I'm going to set it. Okay, now turn your head to the left. That's it. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Let's say that's as far as you'll go. So I set it again, and again I come up in this case, hit the red button one more time, and I end up with 43 degrees. So it shows in this case he had 43 degrees of neck rotation to the left. Continuing on, now we're going to measure neck lateral flexion. And so to do this, to get out any body English or anything of the sort, I'm going to have Jung Su come down here and sort of reach onto the handle there and do the same thing over here. We're going to try, therefore, to minimize any movement that occurs at the trunk. Again, I'm using the inclinometer. I'm going to place it on the top of his head. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my button here. Now, sir, if you bring your left ear towards your left shoulder. That's it. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And I'm going to hit it again. Now I'm going to bring it up and hit it one more time. And so what we see now is he had 47 degrees of left lateral neck flexion. Continuing on, we're now going to measure right lateral neck flexion. So again, I'm going to place the inclinometer here. I'm going to set it. Okay, sir, tilt your head to the right as far as you can. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And stop. That's it. And again, I'm going to set it. In this case, we have 49 degrees of right lateral neck flexion. Okay, now we're going to measure flexion and extension of the neck, this being in the sagittal plane. In some cases, one might put an inclinometer down here to account for any movement in the thorax, but in this case, we're trying to make things nice and stable by having him grab the chair as he did before, and also we put a little bit of a pillow back here behind him so he can remain vertical. But here we go. We're going to start where his nose and his ear are about in line with one another there, that is, the bottom of them. I'm going to put this on top of his head, as we did before. Okay, sir, I'm going to press the button to set it. Okay, now drop your chin to your chest. That's it. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay. Cut that again. Click it again. And so now what we see here is we've got the total excursion that he realized, which was 53 degrees of flexion. 
Continuing on, now we're going to measure neck extension in the sagittal plane. So again, he's lined up for the base of his ear and the base of his nose are basically in a horizontal line. I'm going to set the inclinometer here on top of his head, and then I'm going to ask him to drop the back of his head towards the back of the chair. So let me just set it where it's at. Okay, sir, drop your head back. That's it. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Very good, sir. I'm just going to set it again. Okay, and now I'm going to hit it one more time. And so what we see now is that we have 94 degrees of extension. So we can get his total excursion by adding what we got for flexion to what we obtained for extension, and that would be his total sagittal plane motion. We're going to continue using the inclinometer, but now to measure trunk motions, flexion, extension, and lateral flexion. It's worth noting that the procedures that we use are adapted from those described in this book, Guide to the Evaluation of Permanent Impairment, 4th edition from the American Medical Association. Let's proceed. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with trunk flexion. I'm going to place the inclinometer here at what would be essentially T12, but rather than doing T12 per se, because it's difficult to find accurately, I've made a line 15 centimeters above what we would call the PSIS line down here. So here we go. I'm going to place the, the inclinometer here. I'm going to set it. Okay, sir, reach forward and go down to the floor as far as you can. That's it. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. There you go. I'll click it again. And now I'm going to bring it to here. And what you see is he had 104 degrees of flexion. Now that measurement of flexion was for everything. It did not account for what was happening at the hips. So what we're going to do now is remeasure but we're going to get this measurement so we can subtract that out. So I'm placing it here over the sacrum in the PSIS line. I'm setting my device. Again, Jung Su, if you'll just lean forward as far as you can. That's it. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Set it again and hit it again. And what we end up is with 49 degrees. So we would subtract this from the 104. So what we would do is we'd subtract this from the 104, and that would give us how much range of motion we could attribute to the lumbar spine. Now we're going to look at thoracic flexion, again in the sagittal plane. If you'll drop your head forward, sir. That's C7. I'll come back up again. So I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to set it. Okay, so reach down as far as you can. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. There you go. Okay, I'm going to mark it again and come back up again. Okay, and so again, I'm going to hit the button, and what I find is that he had 117 degrees of flexion. But again, that was entire flexion. So now we're going to subtract out what can be attributed to the lumbar area. Okay, so what we're going to do is go back down to a position we were in before, right here. Okay, so if you just reach down again as far as you can, I set the button. He's going, he's going, he's going, he's going. I set it again, and I get the difference. So I have 107 degrees. So we subtract this from the earlier measurement, and then we know what we can attribute to his thoracic spine. Okay, now we're going to measure, again, lumbar extension. We're going to again use our 15 centimeter line rather than actually T12 because it's easier to find. So I'm going to put it right here. I'm going to set it. Okay, sir, reach back, lean back as far as you can. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Okay. And we end up with his 20 degrees. We're going to now find out what's happening down here at the hips. Set. Okay, sir. Far as you can. Extend back, 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 back. And 20 degrees. Continuing, we're going to look at what's happening in the thoracic spine, but now in extension. It looks like we're still against the chair here, correct? Great. Okay, so what I'm going to do is come up here again. This was C7. That would be T1. Okay. All right, sir. Back as far as you can. Go, go, go. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, and back up. 39 degrees, but let's see how much of that we can attribute to the thoracic spine. Okay, sir. Again, go back as far as you can, as far as you can, as far as you can, as far as you can. 21 degrees. So we subtract this from this to find out what we can attribute to the thoracic spine. Okay, now we're going to look 
at lateral flexion of the spine. We could isolate this to the lumbar area, but I'm just going to measure sort of the entire spine right here. So I'm going to place it up here. Remember before we found C7, which is about right here, so I'm going to place it right here, and we're going to follow his trunk as he moves. While you do this, sir, I want you to keep your equal weight bearing on both lower limbs, okay? And put your arms by your side. Okay, we reset it here. I'm going to set it. Okay, now if you just bend to the left as far as you can. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, and I'm going to set it again and again. And so what we ended up with was 51 degrees of left lateral flexion. We're going to continue, but now we're going to do right lateral flexion. Again, sir, if you'll keep equal weight bearing on both lower limbs, we're going to come up to this position here. I'm going to set it. Okay, now if you bend to the right as far as you can, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Mark it again. And here, and we end up with 54 degrees, similar to the direction uh, to the other side. Now for the purpose of illustration, I'm going to measure several upper and lower limb uh, range of motions. And so we're going to start here with the shoulder, and what we're going to do, as again, just as an illustration, is measure his shoulder external rotation range of motion. So his shoulder is abducted about 90 degrees. Our starting position for this is with the forearm vertical. So I'm going to come in here like this and place it right here, and I'm going to then set, set the uh, inclinometer, as I've just done. Okay, now roll it back. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Let's say that's as far as it'll go. So I reset it again and again. So what we find is that he has 45 degrees of shoulder external rotation. Another upper limb motion we can measure is shoulder abduction. That is where the arm comes out in the frontal plane. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to get it, set it. Actually, I'm going to stand right here, I think. I'm going to set it right here on his arm. Okay, sir, now if you just raise it up. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. That's it. More, 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 more. Let's say that's as far as he can go. I set it again. One more time. And what we end up with is 104 degrees of abduction. And that makes sense. If you notice, while he stayed vertical here, his arm came up beyond horizontal. So 104 degrees seems about right. We could have also done that with flexion, however, like this, but I think the point is made with the abduction measurement. All right, now we're going to measure a couple of lower extremity ranges. We're going to start with straight leg raise. This would be a good time to make the point that we always have assumptions when we're using an inclinometer. And our assumption here is that he is horizontal and that primarily his leg segment here is going to be basically horizontal as well. But we're going to do our usual. I'm going to reset it here. I'm going to place the inclinometer here on his leg. I'm going to set it. Okay, keeping your knee straight, I want you to raise this left lower limb as high as you can. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. That's it. Keep your knee straight. That's it, that's it, that's it. And let's say that's as far as it'll go. So I'm going to click it again and click. And so what we find is that we ended up with 61 degrees of active straight leg raising on the left side. Clearly, we could measure the same thing on the other side as well. Okay. Now we're going to do something called the active knee extension test. The presumption here is that his thigh is vertical. And in this case, we're not going to measure the excursion. I want to know where he is relative to vertical when he straightens his knee as much as possible. So this is still vertical. Okay, now straighten your knee as high as you can. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And I've got this point here. Okay, and I'm just going to measure that measurement. So it looks like it was 31 degrees from full extension. So that is the measurement we would give him for his active knee extension test. In this case, it's just the number here because we did not measure excursion. Again, for the purposes of illustration, we're going to measure the range of motion of another lower extremity action. In this case, hip rotation. More specifically, hip external rotation. So his thigh is going out, therefore the hip is externally rotating. So don't be confused, his leg went in. But anyway, also if you'll note the position of his upper limbs, that's to try to keep his pelvis level. Okay, here we go. All right, sir, if you just do that now, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, and what I hit this again, and what I ended up with is about 49 degrees of hip external rotation. We can continue on with this by looking at internal rotation. He's going to shift the position of his upper limbs. Wonderful, fantastic. And otherwise, it's going to be much like it was before. So I'm going to reset it. Okay, sir, the other way. Go, 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 go. That's it. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay. 
and what I ended up with was 33 degrees of hip internal rotation. So what we've gone over today are measurements that can be obtained with this digital inclinometer. As I indicated before, it's one of only th one of three different models that is made by Hogan Health Industry. This one, however, has a further advantage, the MicroFET 3 that is, of being able to be used as a handheld dynamometer. So you've got a plate here against which the person you're testing can apply force. And then rather than pushing inclinometer, you just put the press the muscle testing button. So what you'll see happens as I do this, I'm just going to push up against it you end up with a measurement of 47 pounds. So I applied 47 pounds into the force plate of this dual purpose device. Let me just make the point as well that there are other inclinometers which exist, such as this one here. The real advantage here, however, as you notice, is I would press the red button, it would allow me to set the actual measurement that was obtained, and then it would do the calculation for me when an excursion was involved. Clearly not the case with a, dynamo with a inclinometer such as this.